So I won't offend some people. Well, <clears throat> crises over in Iraq. Serious crises. People are fleeing for their lives. ISIS is literally cutting children's heads off, killing them. It's bad, it's dangerous, and it's mean over there. Innocent people dying and having to flee. I'm going to put a, a article down below this video. Go to it and read it. See what's going on over there. It's a news article. Got pictures. Not not deadly pictures. Not people dead. I'll let you know that. But just pictures. Could this be happening here in America soon? I mean it. ISIS has already uh, bragged about planting the flag in the White House. They've already bragged about coming over here, taking over the United States. And let me tell you people, these people are crazy. And they're crazy enough to try to pull it off. You know, with all the pettiness of family squabbles and all the crap that goes on, there are more important things than families squabbling for each other and running each other down. I mean, as people know, there's a little one going on in mining. Carl's family because well really because they don't know all the facts if they knew all the facts that I knew I mean I, I found out a lot of things when I was helping fight for um, Carl's disability VA disability because see the government is so strict that to be able to get a VA check you have to specifically prove prove that the incidents happen in the military or they won't give you a check and I I want to send out a thank you to Congressman Bozeman we went and talked to him and he got files released and I got them that's why I have a whole deal full of files on Carl all his military records and and his uh, medical records but I got files that I wasn't supposed to have and Congressman Bozeman helped us get everything that we needed to file properly for Carl's benefits and he got them so I, I don't know why some of his family don't think he was ever in Vietnam or, or uh, was ever in the military, in the Navy. I mean, his mama happens to have a big picture of him in the Navy. His uniform, you know how they do that. But, you know, it's really it's not worth it because I happen to know the truth. So if they don't know the truth or don't want to know the truth or whatever, it doesn't matter. Because when ISIS hit this shores running, all the family quarreling, all the family disputes, all the friendship quarreling, and all the friendship disputes will go out the window. It will. You either run, or you get a gun, or you can fight, or die, or change over and become... Um, Deny your faith and join Islam, which I won't do. I will not worship Allah. I don't believe and bow my name to say, uh, knee to Satan. So um, I guess I get my head chopped off, or I will have to run. I'll have to do these like these people in Iraq run to safety, or run to try to get out of their way because 
either they convert or they die. That's just the simple solution of it. Um, I hope no one gives up their faith in Jesus Christ just for Islam and Allah and go to hell. I hope they don't. But anyway, I'm going to put this article down below. And people, you really need to think about it. We was already invaded 2000 and one. 9-11. You remember 9-11? We were invaded and they took the towers down. But if they come, they will come with a horde of soldiers very well trained and averse of fighting. So we will either have to fight for our lives here in our country and kill them to keep them from killing us or we'll have to run to the mountains and hide or just let them chop her head off and kill us and get it over with. So, I, I, I'm just sorry that people feel that their own needs and desires are more important than anything else. And thank you, Max, for paying for Carl's hand. Because the cancer come back. I mean, it's not it's not going into his system now, right now. It would have to work into his bloodstream to kill him. But he might pray that he don't lose his finger. He don't want to really have him to cut his finger off. But if it's between saving his life from the cancer or getting rid of that finger he can live without the finger but pray for him because he's kind of upset he's 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 upset that it come back because uh, the doctor had thought that he got it all well you know when Carl was in the service on the USS Roberson um, they docked at uh, the Philippines and him and some other guys was asked to move barrels which had that um, stuff they dropped out of the plane the poison that dropped out of the plane agent orange and it got on his hand and then some on his body and he just still has rashes from that but the doctor told me that did the operation said he said that's caused by agent orange he says I I've never seen it on the hand, on, on a finger particularly, but I've seen this type of cancer on other men because of Agent Orange. So they they know that it's from Agent Orange. So uh, we'll probably have to go back down to Little Rock because that's where they sent him the last time to get, get it removed. Um, had to take a skin graft and put on there and and it was from the cheek of his behind and I used to say well now you can have people put your finger out there and say now kiss my you know what <laughs> I kid him about that <laughs> and uh, try to make him feel better um, so yeah it, it 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 it's come back but it's going to be all right God's going to take care of him and uh, this time pray that they totally remove it get every little cell get everything just thank you max for praying for him your dear brother your dear brother and i ask everybody else to pray for carl on this situation um he is a good man and I think it bothers him he needs to be prayed for on that he it, it, when he's he doesn't like to watch the news at all especially with ISIS 
because he it, it, when he sees that he said I don't want to watch that stuff because we're going to have he said we're going to have to fight them yet over here I, I think that's his fear you know having to go through all of that again but here in our land putting me at risk, putting you at risk. I think he doesn't never say, because see, Carl doesn't talk about a lot that went on over there. In fact, I've never found any of the guys that when I was over there that would talk much about it. But um, when there's bad things going on down yeah, like ISIS and stuff. It really it really bothers him. He doesn't like to watch it at all. Because I think he's beginning to feel like they will make their way over here. And he would like to just live out the rest of his life in tranquility on, on our little lot with our home that's fully paid off by the government and and just be here, you know, go out and grow his flowers and, you know, do his thing at peace. He wants to be at peace. He just wants to be at peace. He's had enough. I, I think he's not the only one that's had enough with war and killing and all the crap that goes with war. War's not pretty. It's ugly. It's messy and it's mean. Some of the things I read in in his jacket, you know, it's not good, and I can understand why he wouldn't want to go through that. Have to fight these idiots. He will if he has to, but I, I know that he would rather for them to stay over there, and hopefully somebody will take them all out and. We won't have to worry about them no more. So, I, I want you to really look at this news article and ask yourself, what will I do if they make it over here? What will I do? Will I be prepared to run? Well, there's no way of be preparing because you as, as you find out in this article they run just with the clothes on their back they don't sort of like the scriptures that J Jesus spoke of not to go off the rooftop not go in the house don't get anything don't don't get anything to take with you just leave just go you run just with the clothes on your back that scripture is being fulfilled right now over in Iraq. That's what those people are doing. That's why I don't want to see them come over here because I don't want to see us have to do it. Not that we're any better than they are, people. Not that we're any better than they are. But it would be bad because they really, really hate us. They hate us. And there ain't no kidding about that. We are infidels, and all we are good for is far farther. So, let's pray for these people that's running and hiding. Let's pray that God puts a covering over them, that ISIS won't find them, and they will totally escape. And that people will be able to help them and take care of them until this crisis is over so I'm going to close with this if you have a hate and anger and bitterness in your heart you need to get it out now go into church and sitting on a church pew listening to some dried up dead pastor try to teach you isn't going to cut the mark you need to get into the Bible, you need to read the scriptures, and you need to seek God's will in your life. 
because our churches are letting us down. Just because you go to church don't make you a good person, nor a holy person, or a righteous person. It's you having to read the scriptures and pray daily and seek his face like you've never sought him before to gain that what you need, that thing, that inner, that inner peace, that inner strength from God that only he can give you. Not some pastor in a church teaching the same old, same old. And you walk out of that church just as dead spiritually as you walked in. You need to get some spiritual life in you to face what's coming. That's all I can tell you. I'm warning you. You need to get some spiritualness, spiritual food from the scriptures into your heart and into your life to grow spiritually to fight this that's what's coming because it's not only a spiritual a physical war it's a spiritual war driven by demons itself so wake up america much is yet to come we got a blood red moon the Feast of Trumpets. I mean, the Feast of Tabernacle. We've got another blood red moon. More is to come. Each blood red moon happens. More and more will happen between the other blood red moon that's coming. Because there's four of them. One's happened. There's much happened between this blood red moon and the one that's coming. When that one hits, then there's... The space that more and more will happen, more disasters, more destructions, more things that will boggle people's mind before that blood red moon. And then before the last blood red moon, all hell is going to break loose here upon this earth because there's a solar eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets before the last blood red moon which involves the whole world. The blood red moons mostly involve Israel right now. But with the solar eclipse on the Feast of Trumpets and the last blood red moon on the Feast of Tabernacle, let me tell you, judgment is going to fall upon this world in a way it's never walked across it. Because it's not going to only involve Israel. It's going to involve the whole wide world. Be prepared. Be prepared especially spiritually. Because this is not only a physical but it's a spiritual war that's going on right here, right now. Bless you, people. In the name of Yeshua, bless you. And I forgive every one of them, you. I forgive you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.